What's up guys, welcome back. So warning, you need to watch the previous video for this one to make any sense. Today we will be saving JSON to MySQL database. So we're gonna save a copy of the original cat fax response that we got from our external API to our database. So the advantages of this is it's simple, it's quick, it's easy, and you don't have to break down the data and put it in different columns and tables. You can just save a full copy of the JSON right to your database. Disadvantages is searching and indexing might be more difficult and it might be harder to prevent data duplication. You'll have to do some extra stuff to handle that. So converting JSON to save in MySQL, this is called serialization. And then converting it from MySQL database back to JSON, this is called deserialization. Luckily, MySQL does have a JSON data type. Otherwise, we would have to use a string. We're going to be using the object mapper class, which is part of the Jackson library. This is a commonly used library for handling JSON in Java, and it's already built into our project. So we have a long to-do list. First, we need to create our new table in MySQL with a data type of JSON for one of our columns. We need our entity class in Java. We need methods to convert between JSON and our object. We need a repository interface. We're gonna update the query handler we already have. This is the serialization we mentioned. We're gonna expose a new endpoint and then create a new query handler for the deserialization part. Okay, let's get started. Okay, make your way over to MySQL Workbench. We're gonna run this query. So create table cat underscore facts. Our ID is going to be an integer and it is going to auto increment and it will act as our primary key. This should be nothing new. Then it's gonna have one other column. It's gonna be called cat fact JSON of type JSON and it will be not null. I can then describe cat facts and make sure that it got created successfully, which we can see that it did. Okay, let's create a new folder. So new package, we're gonna call it cat fact entity. New Java class, cat fact entity. And this is the class that will map to our database. So we use the at entity annotation. We use the at table annotation. The name of our table is cat underscore facts. We're going to use all args constructor as well as no args constructor. Our ID will be annotated with at ID. It is a generated value with a strategy of generation type dot identity, private int ID. And then our column was named cat fact json private string cat fact json so this is a really important point java does not have a primitive data type of json so we're going to use a string to hold the data so on mysql the format is json in java the format is a string this is a very important point so then we'll do public cat fact entity. To generate our constructor, we're going to pass in our cat fact, the one that we get straight back from the external API. We will then set this cat fact JSON, our string, and we're gonna call a method convert to JSON, where we pass in the cat fact. Now we can have a long discussion on where this method should live, Probably not in this class since it's more of a utility function, but for now, let's just put it in here so we can see how it's working. So we're going to use the object mapper class. So object mapper, object mapper is equal to new object mapper. We then call object mapper dot write value as string. So what this does is it takes in an object, any object, we're gonna pass in our cat fact, and then it saves it as type string. Now you notice this method call has some squiggly lines underneath it. This is because it can throw an exception. 
So we need to surround it with a try catch block. And just for simplicity's sake, we're gonna say exception E. Of course, we could have better error handling here. We're just trying to get to the end as quickly as possible. So move the object mapper method calls up into the try catch. And this is what we're going to return. Return object mapper dot write value as string. And then in the catch block, we're gonna say throw new runtime exception JSON parse error. Again, this is not necessarily the best way to do it. We're just trying to get to the finish line. So converting from our object to JSON, this is called serialization. So that's what this method is doing. Next, let's write our other method, deserialization. So public, we're going to return a cat fact. Convert to cat fact. So we're going to call object mapper. Object mapper is equal to new object mapper. We're going to call object mapper dot read value. So we're going to pass in the string. So we're in the same class. So we have access to catfactjson. So pass in catfactjson. And we want to convert this to a cat fact. And this is the object we want to return. Of course, we are getting a squiggly line, which means it could throw an exception. So let's go ahead and surround this in a try catch block as well. Basically the same format as above. And I misspelled cat fact, so let me go ahead and add my T. Okay, next up, we need to create our repository interface. So new Java class interface, cat fact repository. We need to annotate it with at repository. And remember, it extends the JPA repository. In angle brackets, we say cat fact entity and integer. Integer is our primary key, if you remember. The repository extending the JPA gives us access to methods that allow us to save to the database. So on the previous video, we created our cat fact controller that calls our query handler. So going in there, let's take a quick look at this. Now I did make one quick change. I took out the try catch where we try to get for object and just abstracted that into its own method just to make it a little cleaner and a little simpler to read. So once we get our cat fact from the external API, we want to save a copy to the database. So right here, we want to save to database a copy of JSON. So first things first, we need access to the repository. So we're gonna say private final cat fact repository cat fact repository. And then we need to pass it into our constructor. Cat fact repository, cat fact repository. This dot cat fact repository is equal to cat fact repository. Now notice we're using constructor injection instead of field injection. I'm just showing you the different ways in which you can do this. Either one could work here. So now we have access to it. So we're going to say cat fact repository dot save. And we need to convert it to a cat fact entity. So new cat fact entity, we pass in the cat fact. And remember, in our constructor, we call the method that converts it to JSON using the object mapper. So at this point, this should be working. Every time we make an external API call, we should see a new copy of JSON in our database. So let's go ahead and start up our project. Okay, making our way back to Postman, let's go ahead and hit our internal API call. So slash cat fact. We're still returning our cat fact DTO, but in this case, it said the average cat food meal is the equivalent to about five mice. So this should have saved a copy to our database. Let's go ahead and check. 
Making our way over to MySQL Workbench, select star from cat underscore facts. Now, I already have some data in my database because I was doing some testing, but if we scroll to the bottom and look at the most recent entry, we can see the average cat food meal is the equivalent to about five mice. So it did save a copy to our database. And if you look closely, you can see this is in JSON format. So you see squiggly braces, you see quotes, you see commas. This is in fact JSON. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is handle deserialization. So we saved a copy to the database. Let's expose another endpoint that allows us to get all that JSON from the database and be able to send it back to the user. So coming back to our catfac controller, let's go ahead and create a new get mapping. And we'll just call it slash local. Public response entity. And it's going to return a list of cat fact entity. Get saved cat facts. This time we're going to use field injection for no particular reason. We're just going to switch back and forth so that we know how to do either one. So at auto wired private cat fact repository, cat fact repository. So cat fact repository dot find all. And we're going to use the Java streams API. So dot stream dot map. And we're going to say for each cat fact entity, we are going to call the convert to cat fact. Then we are going to collect it to a list. So when we convert to cat fact, we are doing our deserialization where we call the object mapper dot read value. So that's the core of this method. We then are going to return response entity dot okay. And I made a mistake here. I want to return a list of cat fact, not cat fact entity. Okay, this should be working. Let's go ahead and run this. Making our way over to Postman, let's go ahead and ping that endpoint, slash cat fact, slash local. When I run it, I get a list of everything in the repository, including the most recent one, the average cat food meal is the equivalent to about five mice. Okay, our work is now complete. Let's just review at a high level some of the things we needed to do. We needed to use the JSON data type in MySQL, but in Java, we had to use a string data type. To handle the conversion between JSON and our object, we used Object Mapper, which is part of the Jackson library, and we used Object Mapper write value to convert it to a string, and we used Object Mapper read value to convert it back to the object. Okay, thank you for joining us. I'll see you in the next video.